regarding you, you as a I black man, but me regarding you as a fellow citizen. That you're That's sitting what I think here, we see. whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me whatever ethnicity about I'm what it's like to be black Whatever in ethnicity I'm, I'm I'll tell you what I am. And Don Lemon told that man that you ain't black, so you can't speak for black people. So on Don Lemon's new show, him and Vivek Ramaswamy, who is running for president on the GOP side of the house, if you will, got into a heated argument when they started talking about Second Amendment rights and what they provided for black people. Let's have a listen. For the audience at the NRA, here, here's what you said, um, referring to back to 1865, here it was. I want you to raise your hand if you know when the first anti-gun laws were passed in this country. Raise your hand if you do. 1865. You want to know when it happened? We fought a civil war in this country to give black Americans the equal protection under the law that we failed to secure them in 1776. But then you want to know what happened? Southern states passed anti-gun laws that stopped black people from owning guns. The Democrat Party then, as in now, wanted to put them back in chains. Wow. Now, what he said at the NRA is truthful. It's factual. Yes, Southern Democrats passed laws, the black codes, to prevent black people from being armed because they were afraid if black people were armed, then they could not come and steal from them like they wanted to and plunder them. So they wanted to prevent them from fully expressing their rights as Americans. Now, I wouldn't have said about the whole chain part. Democrats want to put black folks back in chains. I mean, that's a mischaracterization. That's what Joe Biden was saying that Republicans want to do, want to put black people back in chains. But actually, it was the Southern Democrats who wanted to put black people in chains and who used to hang black people. Yeah, it was Southern Democrats. Then, as in now, that's quite an accusation about the current Democratic Party. Who and what were you referring to? I was referring to Joe Biden and his expression of wanting to put them back in chains, dating back to Lyndon Johnson. I think Lyndon Johnson's so-called great society was one of the greatest misnomers in American political history. He is right about that. I talk about that all the time on my channel, how the New Deal from FDR and the Great Society by LBJ were the worst things that happened to black people. I don't care what woke black person would get on here and tell you otherwise. It was a worse thing because what that did, it took away the incentive for black people to achieve. It took away the structure, the biblical order, the natural order, the family from the black community because it incentivized the dysfunction. It incentivized the disintegration. It incentivized the dismantling, if you will, of the black family. It did. And as a result, you see the things that we have going on in our communities. That's why you can have episodes like you have in Chicago with young, mostly black and brown children running around rampant without any parental oversight. Where even back then in the 1960s, 70 percent plus of black kids were born into two parent homes. Today, that number is less than 30 percent in the opposite direction. Man, this dude's spitting facts. I mean, he must have been listening to some strong conservative channels because he's spitting facts. That's the truth. Over 70% of black children today are born out of wedlock. That wasn't the case before all of these great society and New Deal programs went into place. Hmm, is there a correlation there? The very policies that we implemented in this country in the name of helping black Americans have actually been disastrous for black Americans and all Americans. And I think so that that's something that we need to wake up to. In 1865, you were talking about the black codes, right? That's right. Passed, enacted to make it a crime for a black person to carry a gun exactly. in the South. He can look at Dunn. Dunn's had enough. Dunn's fuming. Just look at him. Dunn Lemon's fuming. He's about to go off on this guy. Man, I'm serious. Dunn is not even moving. Dunn is focused. He's laser focused. He's about to give him a woke argument. He's about to go woke upside his head. But you're equating that to the current president? You're referring to economic change? What are you saying? Well, I, I was referring to Joe Biden's, I think, ill-chosen expression to say they're the party that wants to put you back into chains. What I'm actually saying is that if you look at the policies you of the modern Democratic Party, Democrats. absolutely. So what I'm saying is that actually it's policies like that of Lyndon Johnson and Joe Biden that are actually holding black Lyndon Americans Johnson's back. Lyndon Johnson's the war on poverty. Yes. And in particular, his great society where he actually created incentives in the family, where if you're 
a family, you could actually get more money by not having the father in the home. What, Guess what you get? Of, you get what you pay for. Of, I think it's been really bad for the black community. I think it's really bad for all Americans. What, do you have anything on this before I move on I, to I China? Just, I don't see what one has to do with the other, but go on. I took up a lot of time with Fox. Oh, it's fine. Before. We have time. I, I, don't, I don't really see what one has to do with the other, especially considering... <laughs> Sorry, I mean to laugh. Dunn was trying to bite his tongue, but she kept asking us, so Dunn had to go at it. And using the Civil War to talk about black Americans, that war was not fought for black people to have guns. That's, that's, that's not... That war was fought for black people to have freedoms in this country. Yeah. Actually, that's why the Civil War was fought. Okay. And the sad that part wasn't about fought it, for, for black people to have guns, I think. Actually, you don't know, funny fact is... Now, that's one thing I don't like. I, I understand where Vivek's coming from, but the way that they talk... Okay. Everyone, hear me out clearly. You know, I'm a biblical conservative. I don't focus on skin. I focus on the fact that we're all created. I focus on that we're all created in the image of God, that God has bestowed upon us the ability to interact because he's created our boundaries with one race, one human race. So I don't focus on the skin because focus on the skin causes division. That's what the devil wants to do. He wants to bring a schism into America. With that being said, the way that some people on the conservative side speak about black people can be demeaning. And the way that he's overemphasizing black people as to say that black people, the only reason you're not able to achieve is because of X, Y, Z. He is giving you prescriptions instead of giving you solutions. That's my only thing. I think if we have more of a substantive conversation, about these things, we can get further along without either demeaning one or oppressing the other. Black people did not get to enjoy the other freedoms until their Second Amendment rights were secured. And I think that that's black, one of the lessons that we still learned. people aren't allowed to enjoy the freedoms. I disagree well with you country. on that, Don. I disagree okay. with you. I think you're doing a disservice well, to our country okay. by failing to recognize when the you, fact that we have the quality of black law. skin and you live in this country, then you can disagree with me. But we're not. Don, I told that dude, you ain't black. You are not black. So you can't talk to me about things that black people have dealt with. Wow, Don. Wow. Uh, you mentioned in here that I we have three I, different shades Don, of Don, I think we have to be able here. to talk about these issues in the open, regardless of the color of our skin. Black Americans today, to say that, compare that to 1865 and 1964, I think you need to compare absolutely it to 1865 and have equal rights I, I think it's insulting to black people. It's insulting to me as an African American. I don't want to sit here and argue with you because it's infuriating for you to put, that, to put those things together. It's not right. Your telling of history is wrong. Your, what, what, what part thinking, of the history was wrong? What, 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 what part of the history, history was wrong? That the Civil War was fought. You're making people think that the Civil War was fought for black people, only for black people to get guns and for black people to the have The Civil War was fought for rights. black people in this country to get freedoms, a noble mission. And I think that it, even yes, after, right. even after we succeeded, to, to we had to actually secure those freedoms. It, to reduce it in a speech at the NRA. The Don is trying to pull a straw man, trying to cloud and conflate his argument. His argument was because black people could not own firearms after the Civil War, they could not secure their rights. That's his argument. And when they were able to secure firearms, they were able to guarantee their natural rights. However, he fails to mention, and Dunn's going to talk about this in a minute, what happened during Jim Crow, segregation, reconstruction, all those things. Because those, that period of time is is the period of time that is not discussed much. Because during that period of time, I would, I'm not gonna say that, because I was gonna say something, but I will say that that period really set back black people tremendously, that reconstruction Jim Crow period. So even though black people had the ability to own firearms, they then used them or exercised their right to vote, for example, to do other things because of the Jim Crow laws. So just because they owned firearms back during that time didn't mean they fully realized their rights. And that's what Donald Lemon is trying to get to, is saying that a lot of black people are not fully actuating their rights here in America. And that's a discussion for another day. There's different reasons why black people haven't fully actualized their rights here in America. Number one is because they don't know what their rights are. And number two, they don't know how to appropriate their rights. It's just like a Christian who doesn't know that it's God's will for you to be healed. You may 
have hope that God wants to heal you. But if you know God wants to heal you, you will be healed. To say you're making people think or you're trying to say that black people uh, to get guns, that was that that was the reason that you're there at the NRA. That was the reason for uh, for the Civil War. It I is think a that's fact. reductive. It's not and reductive, I think it's Don. insulting. There are a whole plethora insu- of reasons that I, for look, the Civil with War. With due respect, I find I find your explanation reductive and actually insulting, including to black Americans to say that black people today compared to 1964, 1865, haven't made progress in part because of the freedoms we secured. And the Second Amendment was Black part of the Hold on, that please. Freedom. I cannot keep a thought if you guys are talking to me in my ear. So uh, hang on one second. So to say that, that black people, say, say what you said again. I feel for her. She's like, wow, I shouldn't have let Dylan go. Black people secured their freedoms after the Civil War. It is a historical fact, Don. Just study it. Only after their Second Black Amendment rights had, were secured. They were not fact. secured their freedoms after the Civil War. That is and that's the part that Dunn is, is truthful. Dunn is actually speaking the truth on that. Because a lot of black people, I just saw the Emmett Till movie. And I knew the story, but the uncle had a gun when they came to take Emmett Till from his house. He had a gun. He had rights to own that gun. But just because he had a right to own that gun doesn't mean that he was able to execute that. He didn't have full actualization of rights as an American. He didn't. So to that point, Dunn is right. Now you're, you are discounting uh, uh, Reconstruction, you're discounting a whole host of things that happened after the Civil War when it comes to African Americans, including the whole reason that the Civil Rights Movement happened is because black people did not secure their freedoms after the Civil War, and that things turned around. People were, tried to change the freedoms that were supposed and to And you know how they the got it? They got their Second Amendment rights. No, it wasn't. So, I would, Vivek, if you're listening, I will tell you, don't use that argument. It wasn't the Second Amendment rights that allowed them to get their freedoms. It wasn't. Because a lot of black people had guns during that time, legally had guns, but they still could not fully actualize their rights. They just couldn't. And they actually got the NRA played a big role in that. But today, Don, the, the final, NRA did the, not play a big well, absolutely role. Absolutely, they trained black Americans how to use firearms. That's a lie. That's at, not. The NRA actually, did not play a big role. This in is that. just historical fact. It's but Don, not the, the, fact. The, the part that I just find because you say it's historical the fact. The part that I find insulting fact. is when you say today black Americans don't have those rights after we have the gone through that civil rights revolution in this country. You are sitting here telling an African American about the rights and what you find insulting about the 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 way I live, the skin I live in every day. Here's where you and I have a different point of view. Don is pushing that same old tire woke argument look black people have the same ability and the same rights as white people as anybody else in this country the problem is for the most part we i'm speaking for black people we don't always realize those because of the way that we've been brought up because we've been conditioned to believe that we are victims we are not victims we are not victims we are empowered for greatness and as democrats and the woke liberal left and the woke people I done that wants to keep black people in perpetual oppression because it benefits them. The power helps them. Black and white that black people don't have in this country and that black people do have. Well, here's where you and I have a different point of view. I think we should be able to express our views regardless of the color of our skin. We should have this debate without me regarding you as a black man, but me regarding you as a fellow citizen. You're sitting here, whatever ethnicity you are, explaining to me about what it's like to be black. Whatever ethnicity I am, I'll tell you what I am. I'm an Indian American. I'm proud of it. But I think we should have this debate. Black, white doesn't matter. I think we should have this debate on the content of the ideas. If you do it, you should do it in an honest way and in a fair way. And what you're doing is not an honest and fair way. Okay? It, with, but we with, appreciate you coming on. With Thank due respect, Don, I look Thank forward to continuing that conversation. We'll Thank you. The conversation. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, Pop. We'll talk about China. Yes, let's talk about China. Next time you come back. Oh, thank you. Much to say on declaring independence from China. Okay, something can you can, can move on now, please. Thank you. Yeah.